Right now we're on to a new topic called uh, type bounds, uh, which um, is um, well, is interesting. <laughs> right, uh, up to now we've only been looking at um, uh, generic types with what's called unbounded formal type parameters. And now we can get things a bit more complicated. Um, you can give the uh, formal type parameter what's called an upper bound. And we'll see later on that uh, lower bounds don't make any sense, as I will point out and I'll show you why. Uh, in a, a few slides time. Right, well here's, the, uh, um, here's what it looks like. Uh, is it some sort of generic type? With a type parameter T and we put extends in and then um, we can have class 1 and uh, interface 1 and uh, interface 2 and well as many interfaces as we want or none at all if we do so choose. And then we write code that's using T just like before. Now the effect of this is um, that um, any parameterization of generic type, that generic type there, the uh, parameter that you uh, use in this uh, parameterize in the parameterization must be uh, class one or a subclass of class one, and also it must implement all of the interfaces. That's interface one and interface two. There's a couple of rules apply. You can only have one class in the extends clause here, uh, which uh, which kind of makes sense because um, you can't inherit from two different classes. So uh, unless uh, one is a subclass of the other, which means it's fairly redundant. So that kind of makes sense. Um, so you can only have one class in the extends clause, and um, if you if you have one, it's got to be first in the list. And um, you can have as many interfaces as you want, or none at all, if you so choose. And uh, you're not allowed to have um, array types in here, or uh, primitive types, of course. Now, um, uh, what the compiler does um, when it compiles is it uh, replaces T in the code down here uh, with the first bound in the list, which would uh, be class if there is a class, or uh, the first interface. And uh, that's what gets put into the output class file. So if you've got a source that looks something like that, with code using T, it gets translated in the class file into something that says a generic type with code that's using class 1 everywhere in place of T. And um, uh, then of course it puts the, uh, when you, um, when you uh, use a parameterized type, of course it's then going to put uh, casting in appropriately as a normal. A couple of things to point out. Um, uh, you could have uh, class 1 as being a final class if you want, which is pointless, because then when you come to parameterize it, you could only use class 1 as the parameter, so you might as well have used it all along in the code. So that's why that is pointless. Um, uh, this extends here uh, should not be confused with extends anywhere else. There's yet another meaning of the word extends, which is not good. But you have to live with it, I suppose. Um, above all, don't confuse uh, this extends with the extends in um, in a, a parameterized type. It's quite different. So don't confuse parameterized types with generic types. Um, parameterization is a parameterization of a generic type. Don't get it mixed up. Um, 